All right, Chavayrim, Chanichim, Madrachim, please take a seat. Please take a seat. We need to get started or you're going to lose your Chofesh. You don't want to lose your Chofesh. So please sit down. Let's all take a seat, please. Thank you all for sitting down. Thank you so much.
Notice how much worse the adults are. If we don't take a seat soon, we're going to have to cut Chofesh. So let's go, people. All right, we're just waiting for a few more people to take a seat. And then we can get this shindig started. How about those people in the back? Can you get a seat, please? I wanted you to meet... Um All right, just waiting for a few people in the back there to take a seat, please. Let's go, people. We don't want to lose our cholfesh right now. Gonna need you to take a seat. All right, can I invite people back here to take a seat, please? Hello, welcome. So glad you're here. Would you please take a seat? Thank you. See, we have a live mic here. I'm live. I'm live. Good evening, everybody. Just a few more people need to be seated. Would you like the microphone back? All right, it's all yours. All right, can we have everybody seated? We are going to stand, start the program. Can we ask everyone to be quiet? We're gonna start the program. Thank you. Starting the program. Hello and welcome to the 2022 Forward Together Gala. We're so pleased to have you here at this year's gala, whether you're with us here in the city, streaming from home, or watching a recording at a later date. I'm lucky, overjoyed, and honored to introduce myself as Bailey Krulowitz, Young Judea's National Maz for the 2022 to 2023 term.
For those who may not know, National Mascara is technically the president of our National Teen Leadership Board, but I prefer to think of my role as more of a moderator position, highlighting and workshopping the ideas of my peers. I'd like to start off by thanking our honorees, Michael Berman and Natan Sharansky. We truly appreciate your contributions to both Young Judea and World Jewry. We're also here to honor Camp Tel Yehuda for 75 years of being a haven for Jewish teens like me. I personally owe TY a special shout out because it's the reason for my being. In the summer of 1984, a young Tammy Friedman met a young Josh Krulowitz for the first time. He was in Olive, she was in Bet, a typical Romeo and Juliet story. Fifteen years later, they got engaged right at bunk 6B. Six years later, they gave birth to me. Seven years later, my brother was born, and he was given the middle name Ty, spelled T-Y, which of course is a reference to our beloved camp. And 16 years later, and 16 years later, I was elected National Maz Kira. I feel like I owe you a little more detail, so let me rewind. My dad was a camper at Sprout Lake, then both my parents attended TY. My mom went on year course, then worked for year-round Young Judea. When I was around nine, my parents gave me the option of going to Sprout Lake. I was more than enthusiastic to accept, and that enthusiasm was quickly validated when I realized just how right I felt within Young Judea. I continued as a camper up until my last possible summer, which was this past year, where I was able to go with Young Judea on my first ever trip to Israel and experience the holiest of places with the people and the movement that mean the most to me. Several years ago, my good friend Maya told me about something called Moz, YJ's teen leadership boards for year-round programming. To me, Moz sounded like a way to spread the magic of camp throughout the year, so I ran and was soon elected to Empire Moz, which represents my region of Connecticut and New York outside of Long Island and the city. I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut, by the way. I was on Empire Moz for two years and I loved every minute. The experience taught me how to be a leader for my peers, how to collaborate with a team on programs, and how to understand the pillars of the movement that I so appreciate. The preservation of these pillars was the reason I decided to run for National Moz this past year. For the 2022 to 2023 term, I'm not afraid to admit that my Moz has big goals. We intend to focus on regional expansion. Right now, most year-round programming happens in the Northeast and Midwest. However, we know through simply talking to our friends that interest spans far beyond these two areas of the country. Currently, we're working with Judeans in Texas, South Florida, and Atlanta regions to spread involvement far and wide. Young Judea has transformed over the years, meaning something different to each person and generation. According to my younger brother, Young Judea is camp. To my mother, it was sending snail mail letters and actually calling people on the phone. For me and my fellow Moz members, we're in a trailblazing era of Young Judea, working to find the perfect intersection of a social movement with an activist one. To Generation Z, my generation, and to my Moz, working in and with your community is a crucial part of life. YJ enables you to do so while spending time with your best camp friends, and we find to be, that to be a key factor in growing Young Judea towards the future, Lador Vador. It is now my pleasure to invite Fanny Corman and David Weinstein, board president and director of Camp Tel Yehuda, to the podium. Before Fanny and David come to the podium, we would like to ask you to Bring your eyes to the video. In 1955, we moved to this beautiful spot in Barryville, New York, right here along the Delaware River. And many of the buildings, many of the facilities here are still the same from them, and they're gorgeous. And people come down that hill, and they just love being back at Tel Yehuda. They love it. And at the same time, we're really excited to modernize this place and bring it to the next generation. Always keeping the character of this camp and always remembering that it's the program and the kids that matter. Just need the right facilities for that program and those kids. 
a, a magical place. There's nothing like it. There's no place like it. And what it has been for us and for our family, it's uh, it's indescribable. And it, I love seeing the multi generational aspect of it now, which is, adds another layer to the magic. Uh, one of the things I love about working here year after year is that we get to build and rebuild and recreate this community every year. And it's it's something really magical about watching new kids and new people rediscover the same thing that I had when I was a kid. And I mean, it's been amazing to be able to watch that here with her for the last three years. I feel like I'm one of the luckiest people in the, in the world. My 15 year old is starting her first summer at TY and it, dropping my daughter off feels great, wonderful, scary, but, but it, I'm envious. I'm so envious and I uh, wish I could turn back the hands of time. For me, TY is all about family, community, and love. I want my children uh, here at TY to love the camp as much as I did, but also to love being Jewish and love Israel and have a lifelong connection in whatever way they find that connection. I know there are lots of like Jewish camps out there, but I feel this place is special. One of the things that my friends and I all say is how unique this community is as we've gone around the Jewish world. It's been the gold standard for us and we just want more people to know about it. I think the future to Judaism in America, the secret is here. Somehow the secret sauce is in whatever it is in the air at TY. It was a place where it was okay to love Israel, where it was okay to enjoy Israeli dancing and singing. And I think I just gained more confidence and a strong sense of who I was. And I actually felt like I was my best self at camp. And whenever I came home, my parents, you know, always would say, you seem so good. I love TY, simply put, because it's, it gave me the, my greatest gifts of all, my family, uh, met my wife here, and of course our children now go here. Tell Yehuda and Young Judea influenced my life by continuing to show me the importance of tikkun olam and being able to do the right thing for as many people as you can and how fulfilling that can be um, is actually something that is still important to me today. I love TY because it creates community. The moments in the bunks that shaped who I am, shaped what it means to be a woman, a friend, a Jew, um, all of the identities that I hold nearest and dearest to my heart, those were created and developed in this space. Yes, showing up on the first day of camp is exciting, it's fun, it's new every time. There's always something that just feels a little bit different or feels a little bit more special than the year before. TY75 is a great way to formalize something that we already know about TY, which is this intergenerational uh, bridge that exists here. Um, I wanted to wish to tell you a very big happy 75th birthday. TY is 75 years old, and I'm proud to say that I was here so long ago and that my children are here, and God willing, my grandchildren will get here. TY is at a transformational moment in its life and in the life of the American Jewish community. The future begins with our road to 100 as we enter our 75th year, and we will need to enlist everyone to take this journey with us on the road to 100. Uh, TY has been changing lives for 75 years, and we're really excited to do it for the next 25 years at least. We're gonna need a lot of people's help to modernize this program, to modernize the facility. I hope TY, like the energy doesn't change too much because I just think there's such like an amazing, like spirit here that's completely unreplicated and I mean I hope it modernizes and is able to stay with the times in terms of like facilities and you know stuff like that. And update it uh, because it's so important to a lot of us who went here and we shouldn't let it sort of you know fizzle and die and age out. It should have state-of-the-art facilities. In order to make all of our dreams come true we really need support from people like you. I'm so excited we're celebrating 75 years and I'm really excited that we're on our road to 100 and we're going to need everybody's help in this community to make camp a modern facility and a modern program to serve this generation of teens. In the future, I'd like to see PY last forever. It is so nice to not be sopping wet. <laughs> and it's great to be 75. What an amazing um, 
what an amazing milestone uh, for all of us. I missed those first 30 years, but I know there's some people in here who can tell me about them. And somebody asked me, you know, how do you get to 75? So I got four, four ways we get to 75, four Ps. The first is the people. And I want to ask anybody in here who ever worked at Tell Yehuda to stand up. If you ever worked at Camp Tell Yehuda. All right, look at almost half the room. You're going to stand up again probably in a moment. You folks who work to tell you who to who are on that seven, or if you're out there in virtual land, wherever you are, you changed the lives of tens of thousands of people. You did that by working on that seven of tell you who to. I see some of my madrachim here. I see some of my chanichim here. I know that's true. If you were ever a chanich at tell you who to, or a chanicha, would you stand up, please? Yes. You know, you know, you know. If you ever sent your own kids to tell you who to, thank you, stand up. Thank you for trusting us with them. If you have served, if you have served on the leadership of Tell Yehuda, on the board, on committees, on anything, please stand up. Thank you. And finally, for everybody else in the room, you being part of this Young Judea community has meant you've supported Tell Yehuda. It has always, always been about the people. And it's been about the purpose. I have a sign hanging in my office behind me that Amy, my wife, found years ago from the early 1970s that say, says, an experience in Jewish living. It is still not just an experience in Jewish living, it is the experience in Jewish living. And the program, that's the third P, whether you, whether you call it MA or you call it MH, I know we disagree upon that. If you call it regular or you call it Alamim, if you are an Ulpan, Etgar, Gesher, Hadracha, Chabura, Atid, Atid, Gesher again, because we like to recycle the names, uh, all of our programs have and continue to remain immersive and intentional programs. And finally, and maybe most important to my heart at the moment tonight, is place. Whether you lived in Barryville or lived in Lumberland, because yes, tell you who is in two different towns, you know what this magical, magical place is that some people a long time ago made a really smart decision in purchasing along the banks of the Delaware River and where we get to come summer after summer and with your help we're going to revitalize for the next 25 years. Thank you. And we hope to see all of you on August 20th, 2023, when we celebrate 75 years in Barryville and in Lumberland. Three women who have helped along this path so much that I just want to recognize more. I want to just first of all shout out to Amy again, who's been by my side in doing this. Since, since our first conversation, outside the pump house in Bet in 1977 and until today. Second, and maybe most important, I want to give a shout out to Rebecca Quick. Without the, without the fear that she instilled in us, people might never have gone back to their bunks at night, but at least we knew there was a ghost out there who was haunting us. And finally, my amazing partner in moving Tell Yehuda forward, Fanny Corman, uh, president of the TY board, who with non-stop enthusiasm is taking us and moving us forward with all of your help on the road to 100. So I'm gonna throw it over to Fanny. Hi everybody. Why TY? Okay, so why TY? I couldn't say it any better than everybody, all the chavre uh, they spoke in the video. Uh, no, no words need to be added to that. I just want to share with you that we're in a watershed moment. We're at a time where I can see the path forward in terms of the program of the future, 
the modernization of Tel Yehuda, we're here. It's not in then or sometime, it's beginning now, and it's extremely exciting. Together, we're gonna get there. It's not me, it's not David, it's not the TY board, it's all of us together changing, making a change that is going to be transformational for our children and, God willing, our grandchildren. So this is about me and you making a difference, a difference that will count and reverberate in the communities, among all of the Jewish people, our relationship to Israel, and the future leaders of all of us. This is what it's about. It's about me and you. So I want to know, are you all with me? I can't hear you. Are you with me? A little louder. OK. Me and you, Ani ata. So uh, I'm going to say one thing. One thing that Fanny and I learned is that both of us were asked when we were Hanichim at TY to mouth the words in various Makhilod and Chatzagot. So, since we are going to now all sing together, we're going to invite Adina Friedman, who actually can sing, to help us lead all of us in Aniveta. We got the words? Ready? Come on, Aniveta. It is now my pleasure on behalf of Young Judea to bestow a recognition to Tel Yehuda for 75 magnificent summers. Mazal tov to all of you, to all the leadership involved, to all the campers, the tzavet, the machane, the chanichim, everyone who has made this 75 years great on a road to 120. Thank you, everyone. Forward together, we will make a change. <laughs> so it's the summer of 1996, and hundreds of campers are chanting that at the top of their lungs at the banks of the Delaware at Camp Tel Yehuda. What a rush. I have no doubt that if it weren't for TY, I would not be standing here today. I'm filled with gratitude. What a fabulous night to celebrate together as one young Judea Kehila, all that we have accomplished and so much more that is yet to come. 75 summers at Camp Tel Yehuda and two accomplished and revered honorees, Mike Berman and Natan Sharansky. Mazal tov to all of you.
And thank you to the extraordinary team of professionals and volunteers who have been working tires tirelessly on this celebration. This year, across the movement, we reached close to 4,000 kids, teens, young adults, and chavirim of young Judea through our summer camps, immersive Israel programs, year-round programs, a Yomi Yoon and local alumni gatherings. And let's not forget the hundreds of emerging adults hired and trained to create these experiences. But more than that, we are poised for a deeper and broader impact in the years ahead. We've spent the last year building a roadmap for how we will build on the success of our camps to expand our impact with teens throughout the year and to strengthen Young Judea's role as a leader in Israel education for today's youth. We live in challenging times, and often I feel that Young Judea as a Zionist youth movement is swimming upstream. But then again, so did Noach. In this last week's Parsha, while everyone in the world is going in one direction, Noach is going in another in order to save humanity. And our history as a people is full of examples of our being countercultural and swimming upstream. But this is not simply an expression. In science, we learn that salmon and other fish swim upstream to ensure the survival of their offspring. As young salmon hatch in their home stream, they learn the smell of it so they can return to birth the next generation. Because doing so means surviving. As a movement, we are swimming upstream, not on one front, but on all three of our core pillars. Ahavat Israel, a deep and personal connection to Israel, tikkun olam, leading social change, and klal Israel, being a big tent. And it does sometimes feel like our survival depends on it. Look on our college campuses, in popular culture, and in politics. But it is not enough to simply survive. It is about our ability to thrive. If you step into one of our camps, you will witness the sheer joy that our campers feel in the comfort of our camp communities. In the aftermath of a worldwide health pandemic, we are now living through a mental health pandemic. And our camps provide an environment for healthy socialization, building of resiliency, positive identity building, and meaning making, where our campers and staff can indeed thrive. Your continued support of Young Judea gives us the fortitude and inspiration to not only continue to fulfill our mission, but to pick up speed and increase our impact. Please give yourselves a round of applause and thank those around your tables and in the Zoom room for all of your support. Again, it is 1996, and we are at the banks of the Delaware River in our outdoor synagogue in Berryville, New York, a sea of white, hundreds of teens and young adults singing Lecha Dodi in one voice. Now that's countercultural. I want to tell you about an exciting $100,000 project that we are launching at tonight's gala, the Young Judea Sidor Project. Remember those? Well, can you believe we're still using the same blue cedarim that I used in 1996 on the banks of the Delaware River? The sign of a thriving movement is that the expression of our joy must continue to evolve. As we are looking at all aspects of what it means to be a big tent Zionist movement in 2022, we will spend the next couple of years wrestling with the question of what the ritual and religious life of young Judea should be and how it should be experienced across our programs and camps. The new Sidurim will be one of the products of these deep ideological and practical conversations. And we look forward to involving the YJ community in this movement-wide project. I am thrilled to share that we have a generous lead gift of $25,000 that has been donated by our Nachshonim, Roger and Fanny Corman. And it was donated and dedicated in the memory of their Rav, Rabbi Ronald Egan Zichronoli Racha, teacher, author, Zionist humanitarian, and supporter of Young Judea. 
And now it's your turn. Please turn your attention to the screen for instructions and take out your phones so you can join the Cormans in supporting this important movement-wide initiative that all camps and YJ programs will benefit from and will ensure this next generation can continue to chant at the top of their lungs and experience a joyful Judaism that is committed to Ahavat Israel, Tikkun Olam, and Klal Israel. Erev Tov. Get your phones out. We're going to take a few minutes for you to take your phones out. Scan the code or text to this number if you'd like to participate in raising money for our Young Judea Sidur project. Couple of minutes. If anybody needs help, please raise your hand and one of our staff will come and help. You will also have the opportunity to do this throughout the night. The cards on your table are to donate to the Sidor project. Please welcome Tamar Yaniv, a recent year corset, to the podium. Hi everyone, I'm here to speak to you about Year Course. I'm sure you've all heard about it before. Hi everyone, my name is Tamar Yaniv, and I grew up in Miami and recently moved to Boston after living in Israel for the last year. I want to thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight about Year Course, a program that is so special to me. I myself went on Year Course in 2017, and I stopped Year Course this past year as well. I thought about this moment for a really long time. What story am I going to tell to a room full of Judeans who have either gone on Year Course themselves, or at least have friends or kids who have gone and are constantly raving about it? I'm proud to be both that friend and that kid. How could I best represent the program that changed my life, the life of my peers, my chanichim, the lives of so many people in this room, and even my mother, who is a former year courser and proud Judean, thanks to Fanny Corman, who started the first Young Judea Club in Puerto Rico. What story can I tell to encompass this incredible nine-month experience or 18-month experience in my case? My journey with Young Judea began at Camp Judea in 2007, but when I really felt the force of the movement for the first time, it was at Camp Tel Yehuda. I met hundreds of teens from all over the world who, just like me, were singing bagel cheers on Sundays and screaming their hearts out on Maccabia. I corresponded with one of my Camp Tel Yehuda, but later to be year course friends while trying to think of a specific memory or story that was noteworthy and representative enough of year course to share with you all tonight. She immediately responded and said, rather than one standout experience, year course is woven into every day of our lives. And she's right. The lasting effects of year course can be seen in the long-lasting friendships so many of us have made, in the independence we gained while living in a foreign country that taught us so many lessons that we will carry with us for the rest of our lives. It's the experience that we gained through our volunteering and internships and the knowledge we gained from our classes. It's our views of on Israel as people who have lived there, and it's about the forming of our Jewish ident identities. Year course really follows us everywhere. As a year course participant, it was all about making sure that I made the best of every moment and took advantage of every opportunity available to me. 
and as a year course staff member, it was about making sure that I was doing everything in my power to facilitate that experience for as many year course participants as possible. I realized the importance of all of this when I was sitting at the hotel in the north of Israel on the last night of staffing year course, right before my chanichim took a flight home. I sat where I sat four years prior and watched as my chanichim cried as they hugged their friends and reflected on the past year just like me and my friends did four years prior. And that's when it dawned on me that my experience on year course, while it was special to me, it was not unique. It didn't have meaningful experiences and develop, I didn't have meaningful experiences and develop important relationships because I happened to be on the perfect year course with just the right people around me. But year course is special because it is this long and crazy experience full of emotions, tension, love, all in this special little country that brings together our people, our history, and our culture. Year course has a way of melding people together and building spaces and opportunities for young people like me to have these experiences and build these meaningful relationships. My year course chanichim would always ask me if I kept in touch with my year course friends after all of these years. I would proudly tell them uh, that I do um, and that my mother too still keeps in touch with her year course friends. I'm excited to see year course foster many more lifelong friendships and give this one of a kind experience to many generations of year coursers to come. Thank you. If anybody's having trouble with the QR code, please use the text to give option that's on your card. Thank you. David? Good evening, my name is David Lehrer, and I am the board chair of Young Judea Global and a proud Judean. In 1978, writes Judean and now Young Judea Global board member Greta Rothschild, I was at a Bogrim convention when I learned about a certain Jewish refusenik from the Soviet Union named Anatoly Sharansky. We spoke out by writing letters for his release and making signs to demonstrate solidarity. As president of Connecticut Young Judea, Barbara Sofer writes, it was to the Capitol in Hartford, Connecticut that we marched in 1967 to let Soviet Jews go, my first demonstration. This notion that a Jew is never alone because the extended Jewish family will always protect us has guided both our lives as Zionists write, as Zionists write Giltroy and Natan Sharansky. It is why I, Gil, joined the Young Judea Zionist movement and became an activist for Soviet Jewry. Disappearing from my final weeks of preparing for my graduate orals in 1985 to visit Soviet Jewish refuseniks over Passover. And far more profoundly, it is why I, Natan, understood throughout nine years in the gulag that I was not forgotten, that I was not abandoned, and I was never alone. For Judeans, being involved in the free Soviet Jewry fight was the full expression of our motto, Ani ve'ata nishane'et ha'olam. And tonight, Young Judea has the privilege to honor human rights movement and a leader in the struggle to free Soviet Jewry. Good evening, my name is Tamar Aronson. I'm a lifelong Young Judean. My story with Young Judea began when I was eight years old with my first summer at Camp Sprout Lake. Continued on to Tel Yehuda, went to Israel with Young Judea, went on year course, and ultimately made Aliyah with my best friend from your course in the summer of 2020. Like so many others, Young Judea changed the course of my life. I often say it's impossible to separate Young Judea from who I am because it's shaped the person I am today. It's my honor to be here today with Mr. Natan Sharansky, who is receiving the Young Judea Aniva Ta Award in recognition of his extraordinary leadership, his embodiment of Young Judea values, and his commitment to tikkun olam, repairing the world. Mr. Sharansky, it's a privilege for me to be here today. Thank you for joining me in this conversation. Your story is when I grew up learning in Young Judea, 
a story of persecution, of passion, of perseverance. In honor of this momentous occasion, I'd like to invite you to share a few reflections with us. How did Israel play a role in sustaining you through some of your most challenging moments? And how can it serve to galvanize the next generation's inspiration and motivation to be part of the Jewish story and Jewish identity? Well, uh, I was typical, absolutely assimilated Soviet Jew who had nothing Jewish in our life except of anti-Semitism. And to be a Jew was like to have a disease. To have a, uh, you are born with this disease and you have to know, know how to succeed in life in spite of this disease. And you understand that for these people, Israel and you are the same. And then you want to understand it and you start learning and studying and suddenly understand that you have unique people behind you. You have unique history behind you. And you have the state which is ready to do everything to help you to become free. When you were imprisoned, were you aware of the movements, rallies, protests, often by young people, including in Young Judea, in support of you? And if so, how did you feel? For a few years, I was the activist of a Jewish movement, the movement of human rights in the Soviet Union. Jewish establishment, with all its importance, with all its historical knowledge, with all the resources it has, has to be moved by the initiative, enthusiasm, idealism of the young. And it was young people, the students, the members of Young Judea and other Jewish young movements who were pushing for the struggle, who were leading the struggle, and who mobilized establishment to work. And what do you see as the agenda for the next generation of Judaism and the future leaders in the 21st century? Those who want to change the world. They have been saying, it's very difficult. Tikkun alam, it's not a simple thing. But it's uh, the right aim for young Jews, uh, for young people to do. But the only source of their strength they, uh, to change the world, they can find in their identity, in their connection to their community, to their people, and to the state of Israel. What skill set and qualities do you think our next generation of leaders need, and what can we do to help cultivate that? Uh, you have to be very open to different ways of expressing your identity by our people. Because you know that Israel has to be the home for all the Jews of the world, together with their communities, with their prayers, with their rabbis, with their leaders. So it is very important to be knowledgeable, to be tolerant, and at the same time to be very passionate in continuing this mission of Jewish people. What does it mean for you to be receiving this award from Young Judea, the oldest Zionist youth movement? I always knew and I always felt that only the young people can lead us to the future. And that's why uh, I spent so much time in, uh, in the Jewish summer camps, in the Jewish schools. And their enthusiasm is the best guarantee of the continuity of our place. So, being recognized by young that I'm part of them, that's the best gift that I could get. Thank you. And before we go, what message do you have for the leaders of tomorrow? Only when you're deeply connected with your family and with your people and with your history, you have the strength and power to change, to make our world a better place. Mr. Shransky, this has been such an inspiring moment for me as a young person, as an activist, as a Zionist, as a Jewish woman to be speaking with you today. So thank you so much. I grew up in a movement that taught us you and I will change the world. And so much of our mission comes from the example that you have set for the past decades and for years to come. So thank you again. Thank you, Tawa. Greetings. This is Gil Troy, standing with my friend and co-author Natan Sharansky in Kiryat Moria. What unites us is our love of Zionism. So first I want to congratulate Michael Berman, uh, the honoree tonight, and uh, say, you know, Mike, you always were ahead of me in the movement. Now we're the same age, but back then you were older. And I always looked up to you. Uh, you were a trendsetter, you were a madrich, you were an important leader. Uh, and I still look up to you, especially now, because uh, Noah's solar panels are right on my rooftop and uh, you continue to set a very, a very important standard. And we've never lived in the same place, Mike and I. Uh, 
Uh, you now live in the Republic of Tel Aviv. I live in Jerusalem. But we share many values. And it's a similar kind of thing. Natan and I always talk about the fact that in the 1980s, I was studying history at Harvard. He was making history in Russia and then in, uh, in Israel in the Gulag. I grew up in the vast shopping center called North America. He grew up in the vast prison camp of the Soviet Union. And nevertheless, so many things unite us. And what unites us? Zionism. His movement, the Refusenik movement, his movement, the dissident movement, was about human rights, about that balance, as he was talking about with Tamar, between universalism and particularism. And our movement was always about being strong, proud people, strong, proud Jews, strong, proud Zionists, and understanding Aniva Atanish and Ataolam. When we visited the Soviet Union, when we protested against the Soviet Union, we did it as good Jewish citizens. And we've always talked about the fact that we were never quite sure that we we're going to make a difference. And what's so amazing about you and your wife, Avital, is that you were in it. You were paying a much higher price, but you knew that your values, your vision would change the world, and you have. And so it's my great honor to give you the Aniva Ata Nishanata Alam Award as an inspiration to all of us that you and I, in the words of Arik Einstein from 1971, can really change the world. Mazal tov. Thank you, thank you, Gil. It's always great to feel yourself part of our family and part of young movement. Thank you. Good evening, Steve Berman here with David Beckhofer. Hey, I didn't get a harump out of you. Uh, we're here to accept the award for Natan Sharansky. Which one is it? Thank you. Wow, that's a nice award. Natan, you're going to like this on your mantelpiece. It's beautiful. Genuine glass. Genuine glass. Okay. Now we are introducing the video of our own Mike Berman. come from a young Judea family. My older brother got involved with young Judea when he was a teenager. I followed in his footsteps and our younger brother followed in our footsteps. We all went to Camp Tel Yehuda. We all went on the Young Judea Year Course program. We have eight children between the three of us and we have sent all of our kids to Young Judea camps and to the Israel programs in Year Course. So it's a completely Young Judea family. All my kids were very involved with Young Judea. My younger son was the national maskir of Young Judea. But we were never, as parents, other than as parents sending our kids to Young Judea, we were never involved. We were never on any boards or, or anything. We kind of viewed it as, and this was conventional wisdom and still is for many people, it's kind of, it was Hadassah's responsibility who sponsored Young Judea and funded Young Judea. And we were parents and it was important to us, but that was the, that was the end uh, of our involvement. Uh, and then in 2010 or 11, I got a call from my brother, who had gotten a call from Betsy Gold, uh, who was an old friend of his from Young Judea, saying Hadassah was uh, reconsidering and trying to think through what they were going to do with uh, Young Judea, that they had some strategic decisions they had to make. And there was a group of us that kind of coalesced and came together. One person called the next, called the next, Steve called me, we called some other people. And we became a group of people that Hadassah started working with to uh, uh, spin Young Judea out to be an independent entity. And that group basically, when called, everyone in that group stood up and said, I will be there, Hineni, I will step forward and I will, it wasn't part of anybody's plan. Uh, and, uh, and that group is still involved with Young Judea today. Uh, almost all of them are members of the board still. Uh, and very active uh, lay leaders and donors and uh, advocates for everything that we do at Young Judea. The thing that makes me most proud is that we have been successful in uh, sustaining Young Judea, uh, keeping it moving in the right direction. I don't even want to say, at first it was kind of a challenge of keeping it alive. Now I would say that it's the challenge of having Young Judea thrive. And we're in a thriving mode right now uh, across the board. Uh, and that is extremely gratifying. We 
uh, have, I think, a very important role uh, to play in exposing kids to the real Israel with all of its glories, all of its challenges, and all of its flaws, uh, to be part of it, uh, to be part of that, uh, uh, of that family. The, the activity over the last 10 years uh, has been a labor of love uh, for me and all of the volunteers who've been involved. There are literally hundreds of people who have contributed to this effort over the course of the last decade. And it is really, if anything, it's just uh, a symbol that I'm receiving this honor on behalf of everybody. The Delta Force, the uh, initial board that we, that we recruited, all of the board members, the senior staff, the camp boards, uh, everybody has been working extremely hard and it's a team effort. And again, I'm gratified that I've received this honor, but it's really not all about me. It's about all of us and the work that we have done together. If you asked every single person in this audience uh, why they're here, uh, I bet there would be a common thread that Young Judeo is very important to them and they want it to be important to the next generation as well. <laughs> Mazel Tov, Dad. There are so many great things that everybody could say about you, but uh, I think you deserve all of it, and I love you. Mike, congratulations. Kola Kavod. This has really been a very big effort on your part and an important effort on your part, and I think you've done a beautiful job, and you should be very proud of what you've accomplished. Dad, congratulations on ten very long years of very hard work and you deserve all the honors and all the plaudits and all the uh, all the uh, awards that are coming to you. Wow, that was a nice video, especially of Mike's grandson waving his feet. <laughs> Very talented kid. So you, you heard about Betsy Gold and myself and Mike Lasday meeting with Nancy Falchuk, our beloved Hadassah national president. We think it was in late 2010, and in January of 2011, we put a meeting together. And Betsy and I immediately reached out to David and to Michael and ask them as an esteemed management consultant and a highly respected biomedical venture capitalist what their thoughts were about this new independence. And we finished our pitch, and like good salespeople, Betsy and I went silent to wait for the reaction. And it was deafening. <laughs> David said, I'm not sure this can work. <laughs> and uh, then Michael said, about his third brother. Yeah, I think David's right. I'm not sure this can work. <laughs> and in the call, after the call, Betsy said, well, what do we do now? And I said, don't worry. I'll take care of them. <laughs> and, and like an old, good older brother does, I said to my two younger brothers, you don't understand. We don't have a choice here. We've got to do this. And it's a wonderful opportunity to do this. So. David jumped in, like David always does, with both feet, and he did an amazing job of bringing the Delta Force together and leading us with Nancy Falchuk and Hadassah's help to this independent state. And he was our first board chairman, and we owe him a tremendous debt of gratitude. And we thought we had it easy. We thought this was going to be an easy job, because really what we were talking about was a hundred-year-old startup. What greater combination of traits and attributes could there be than a hundred-year startup? What? Tell what? us. Tell what? us. What? What? Tell us. So I don't know how many of you out there have ever been an entrepreneur. Raise your hand if you've been an entrepreneur. All right. So it's hard to start something up from scratch. How hard? Really, really hard. <laughs> And, you know, the minute we got involved, it felt like, hey, 
Hello. Are you guys talking over there? I heard you over there. All right. Nice, quiet, love that. Thank you. So it's, it's a challenge. It is absolutely a challenge to actually do a, uh, do a startup. And it was a struggle. The finances were hard. We had this, there was a pandemic in the middle of it somehow. It was very, very complicated. Uh, but as Nachshan uh, Barami Nadav led us through the sea of, reeds. sea of Reeds, we came through the Red Sea of our own. And, but the difference was that somehow as we went from, to our mouth and the water rose to our nose and he prayed for a miracle and the miracle we got was Michael Berman. And somehow the water started to part. But now this is where I'm going to sort of move off script for one second, all right? Because in June of 2011, I actually had the opportunity to stand up in front of the Hadassah National Convention. And I did the following, actually. I, they were all a little bit skeptical about the idea of spinning off Young Judea. And I said, here's what I hope. And I pulled out my wallet. And I pulled out a $100 bill. And I said, with this, I want to make my daughter a life member of Hadassah. And so my equivalent tonight is to pull out a little blue cloth card, all right, and say, I want everybody to grab that card and pull it out and take a picture and make yourself a life investor in Young Judea. Many of you are already, but a little bit more never actually hurt. As, as, uh, as David Ben-Gurion said, you know, in order to be a realist, you need to be a little bit of a dreamer. And Actually, I think everybody in this room are dreamers because we're all here today in support of Young Judea. And it has been a dream and it has been a challenge and it has been a hope on our part. But the key through the entire equation has been leadership. And it's been actually the leadership of Michael through the challenges that we've had in order to make this all come to fruition. It's true. Thank you. So that's true. And the leadership is the one enduring human quality that makes the difference in any organization, in any community. And leaders in commerce, education, our political lives, they make this difference. In Young Judea, we've been blessed to have the leadership of Michael Berman, who in the best tradition of our movement, led by personal example, the Dugmai Sheet. And when other people would say to their colleagues, charge, Michael would always say, Aharai, follow me. Uh, this isn't a dinner of honor. It's not a, really a gala. I want to dispel that. It's not a moment of recognition or veneration. This really is a moment of gratitude. Thanks to Michael Berman for everything he did to lead us to this point. Thank you, Michael. I guess that means you can believe everything you read on the internet, too. For, this is my granddaughter, Nina. The best granddaughter in the world. Even maybe better than her sister, who's not here, maybe. For me to be honored in the same evening as Natan Sharansky is kind of an out-of-body experience. 
To me, Natan is the ultimate symbol of freedom, democracy, morality, and the unity of the Jewish people. I'm standing here, as you heard tonight, because 11 and a half years ago, Steve called me to tell me that Hadassah was making some strategic decisions and that Young Judea's future was in the balance. My initial reaction was, oh my. <laughs> uh, Steve's reaction was, we can't let this happen. To which I said, and what are you going to do about it? And as you heard the story, together we did make a difference. Together we did change the world. He insisted that I join the call, and this was what the beginning of the Delta Force. Every member of that Delta Force was busy with our professional, personal, and community lives. None of us was looking to get involved in some new project, but we all realized that if we didn't step up, the outcome for young Judea would be very poor. So when called upon, like the prophet Isaiah, we all said, Hineni, I am here. Like Isaiah, we had no idea what was coming, but we committed to the mission nonetheless. To put it mildly, the next decade was intense and dicey for young Judea. It really was not clear whether we would have the energy, resources, and skills to do everything that was required for young Judea to be independent, survive, and thrive. It was not a straight path. We made a bunch of mistakes, but there were many good decisions as well, and we put endless energy into the enterprise. I think we can now say, after nearly 12 years, that Young Judea is on a path to continued su success. I'd, I'd, I'd like to invite all the members of the Delta Force to please come up on stage. Steve Berman. Come on, all of you. Steve, David, Betsy, Michael Sherman, Mike Lasday, Shelly Sherman, Ronnie Schwartz, come on up here. Steve, you were the big picture guy, always focused on the objective and what we could and must accomplish. Betsy, you were the catalyst that started the whole process, and you continue to be the catalyst for everything good that Young Judea does. Michael Sherman, you are not a YJ alum, although your kids are. Yet you saw the amazing impact of Young Judea and dedicated yourself to perpetuating this force for good in the Jewish world. David Beckhofer, you were our irrepressible leader, the leader of making the deal happen with Hadassah and the first board president. Don Ashkenaz, Zichrono Lebracha, Don was the heart of everything we did. He often reminded us that saving young Judea was a meaning of life mission for all of us. Mike Lasday, <laughs> your insights into the inner workings of young Judea, of the camps, Israel programs, what works and what doesn't, was critical to everything we did. Shelley Sherman, You were our bridge from the past to our future. As head of Young Judea within Hadassah, you directed and harnessed our energy in a thousand ways that drove our success. Ronnie Schwartz, you joined us at the beginning and were the master craftsperson of our relationship with Hadassah, which has been and remains so important to us. Over the past 11 and a half years, you have all given your time, your energy, and your treasure to this mission. 
by, I, by my estimate, about $2 million in treasure, by the way. This, just this group here and our spouses. And I want to thank you, everybody here in the audience, all of you this evening. Thank you to the staff across all of Young Judea, our camps, Israel programs. Thank you to our lay leaders, donors, and supporters. Together, we are changing the world for the better, and we will continue to do so. I'd, I'd like to thank my wife, Judy, right there. Judy grew up in Habonim. So we have a kind of a mixed marriage. Um, but thank you for putting up with everything Young Judea over the past decade. <laughs> Last year at this gala, and I understand I'm between you and your dessert, so I'm finishing up. Last year at this gala, Fanny Corman made a comment that has been echoing my, in my head ever since. She said that as a result of a scholarship that she got from Hadassah, she was the first kid from Puerto Rico to attend Tel Yehuda. Think about that. 60 years ago, somebody made a donation to Hadassah. As a result, dozens of Jewish kids from Puerto Rico followed in Fanny's footsteps and went to Tel Yehuda. For many of them, this changed their lives. Here we are 60 years later, still seeing the impact of that scholarship. And the most amazing thing is that every single one of us, every single one of us here in this room has the opportunity to have the same long-lasting impact. Every hour we give, every dollar we give, impacts kids today and will still be felt 60 years from now. Tonight we have a lot to celebrate. Now more than ever, we need an inclusive, pluralistic, action-oriented movement that helps youth develop a lifelong engagement with Judaism and Israel. We need Young Judea more than ever. And as it says in Pirkei Avot, no one is required to complete the task, but neither are we free to refrain from it. Thank you very much for this honor, and thank you for supporting all of the work that we do together. Just a few more minutes before we go to dessert. If everybody can just quiet it down for a few more minutes. Before we go to dessert, I just wanted to remind you that on your cards, if you're going to be donating tonight, to, to actually donate, you text to the number that's on this card, these little cards over here, you put the word in forward together, and it will take you to the donation page. I just wanted to close the evening um, by thanking um, our incredible honorees, Mike Berman, Natan Sharansky, 75 Summers at TY. Uh, I wanted to thank our exceptional event chairs, Gita and Steve Berman, Kate Neve and David Beckhofer, our wonderful journal chairs, Lauren McGalnick Berman and Dan Berman. Our incredible host committee, thank you. I also want to thank the incredibly dedicated Young Judea staff and TY staff. A special, a special shout out to Taylor Wishnoff and Hannah Lane, who worked tirelessly to make this night possible. I wanted to thank all of our guests that um, are on our online live stream. We're so happy to have you. 
Hope you enjoyed the program. To our virtual host, Benji Lovett. To our event coordinator, Fab Styling. And last but not least, thank you to all of our incredible supporters, our institutional supporters, our corporate sponsors, our event sponsors, and to every single person who is in this room tonight and made this possible. Please join us for dessert and record. Make sure you get to the small station by the TY exhibit, and let's dance.